This is the first round of the World Cup out in town. There we are, already six victories that he's had so far this year, past world champion. Being chased down then, I thought the Chulets were in fine form today, and that is right, Jim Vandelaire. We'd already seen him try and go away early on today. And Jim is in great form, and he's closed up on him, on his back like a little flea onto a dog. And there he is, and he's just sitting there and waiting for Ardentown to do the work. And it looks as if uh, Rooks is coming through now. And behind him, Yekimov missed that move. It has absolutely broken apart the seams. And Jim van der Leer has gone as Ardentown has put in another attack. This man is formidable. He's got the power, he's got the pressure, he's got the few yards lead on Jim van der Leer. Look at that, almost nonchalantly. He looks back to see Raul Alcala coming up as well. Sonnenson sitting on Carla's wheel. Rooks back there in the red, white and blue. Still Ardentown. And the crowd, the Defossi as they call it, going absolutely mad. Great supporters of wheel sport. I've been out on the San Remo car rally as well a few years ago, and I can tell you up there in the mountains uh, through the night, they come out at all hours at Tifosi and cheer the cars on through. And here in cycle racing too, look at the state of that road. They've written Munoz's name there, the world champion, who won this race in 1990, but he isn't going to do it this time unless he can get up with that pack and sprint past this man on his own at the front. Muddy Argentine. Useful gap opening up, and so Fondriest has got to do something about it. He's had the shelter of his teammates, and Fondriest going past uh, Sorensen, last year's World Cup victor, sensing that he's got to stay close to this man up in front. There are 50 points at stake. There are only the top uh, uh, 12 riders are going to get points now. Last year went down to 15, and the winner got 25 points. But in fact, this time... And there's Kelly in there as well, in the blue. Sean Kelly, previous winner of this race. What a finish we're going to have. The firemen are behind, pumping on the coals to try and catch Marino Argentan in front. Anybody with anything left in his legs wants to get within a shouting distance of this man on the descent of the Poggio. It'll be one kilometre of the flat at the bottom. And those big sprinters behind, there's still some men prepared to try and jump across that gap. And Argentan knows he's got to keep going. He can't ease back for one single second now. He's shown his power on the Poggio. And he's now got to go eyeballs out for the finish. So he's just got a lead of Otto Seconde, as they're saying over the PA here. That's uh, eight seconds uh, from my days in uh, Italy. On the other side of the of the leg of Italy, actually, in Trieste in the army. What to do a few days elsewhere. Saw the jolly old tour of Italy, one of the squaddy, and got attracted to cycle racing from way back then. Otto Seconde. And there we are, more of the... Uh, Beautiful greenhouses with the flowers in, but no time to admire the scene. He's sweeping round yet another of those bends. This breaks the rhythm up, and the rest of the pack, that's quite considerable. There must be about another 20 riders still in there. Fondria coming through first. Looks back, finds uh, uh, Sorensen. Looks back, finds Kelly there. Kelly into a fourth spot on the road at the moment. Yet again, another of those bends, and Argentine will be able to look across, and he's putting in a big gear. Last year, going up the uh, top of this climb, as they went over the top then, it was uh, Kiapucci that went up on his 44 by, uh, by 15, that's his 44 inside ring, and his 15, and he went over the top then. He suddenly slammed it onto his 52 ring and just came down the other side as hard as he could do. Two chainings on the front, and the big one will be into play for the descent. But you've got to leave something just in your legs. That little bit must still be there in case they come up. But he's trying to keep away. Look there, I'll see the chain on the outside of that ring. Moreno Argentown. The gap still looks about the same. And Kelly is leading the chase. He's got to do that because Sorensen is right behind him and Sorensen won't do any work at all. Three kilometres to go. Just something round about, uh, that's just a bit over three minutes, in fact, probably about three and a half minutes, and Kelly's looking very keen. Winner already of the Grand Prix Louis Puig this year. And look at Kelly rocking out the saddle. He looks like he's going away from Sorensen. Sorensen can't close the gap, but a wonderful shot. My helicopter's got them all going in all directions, snaking down this slope. Every man trying to get in there because there's vital points and a lot of money at stake as well. And 15 seconds, it's grown from the eight as he came off the top of the climb.
Just waiting to see where Sean Kelly is. Bated breath, I'm sure my friends in Ireland right now riveted to their television sets and urging on the man from Carrick. One of the oldest men in the sport, and he's still got all that exuberance. And, of course, with two young twins to uh, uh, feed as well, I'm sure that uh, he's going to try and get in there, win this one, get some more money. Sean, a brilliant competitor. In fact, his young son's named Nigel, after Nigel Mansell, who showed the way to fight back yesterday when Nigel Mansell, in the Mexican Grand Prix, set up the fastest qualifying time in the first round when he came out with about three or four minutes to go and really showed what an expert he is on four wheels. And we're watching experts on two wheels and Sean Kelly is chasing down Argentina and he's closing the gap. That is certainly not 15 seconds. It's coming down and it's Kelly that's going after Argentan. And Argentan knows he can look back and realises, having been seen up the swirls that he was opening a gap, that somebody's coming to and that man is Kelly. And the down on the bottom, it's just coming towards the one kilometre to go. Can Kelly close the gap? Has he got anything left? He finished the season in fine style in the bowl, Sean. He won the Giro de Lombardy, the last World Cup event on the road. He's closing up on Argentown. Is Kelly going to make it as they go under the red flag? A one at the end of the season, a one at the start of the season in the World Cup. He looks back at the moment, he free wheels. He's got to decide now if these two can play cat and mouse down that finishing straight before the rest of the pack come at them like a pack of hungry wolves snaffling at them. Argentine looking back. Oh, look at this! This is... Oh. The crowd at the finish have just been told that Kelly's caught Argentine. They can't see what you can see. And they've gone... Oh. The depression set in at the moment in the finishing arena and they're all peering anxiously down to see and look at the gap now the, the telefocus lens is for shortening the gap it's not as close as you would think but it's still enough for that big punch if the bunch really start to roll they might catch these two in front in the red and the yellow on the front that's Benino Argentan in the blue behind him is Sean Kelly from Ireland Kelly now begin to wind it up Argentan in front of him swinging around the corner the crowd now can see that they're Man is on the front. The Italian versus the Irish, and he cuts across uh, Kelly, but down got the crash behind him. Well, the Motorola boys have gone down with the back. I think Fondis has gone as well. And Kelly's going away. Kelly's going to get it. Kelly gets it. Sean Kelly, the winner of the 83rd Milan San Remo. What a way. Six hours, 26 minutes, and 23 seconds of racing. And Kelly is back with a bang, and this lot are down likewise with a bang. And yes, I thought it was Motorola that bit the dust. Bad luck for them, but good luck for the Irishman himself. Well, I don't know how the rugby is going on, Ireland versus uh, uh, France in Paris as uh, in comes uh, Anderson and the rest of the pack being told to move out of the way. Let's look back at this sprint and a moment of glory from the man from Carrick on shore. Right now, the Guinness will be flowing amongst my friends of it. Oh, Dan is really pleased with this one. His father-in-law, a great character, and his family too. Lovely people. Well, I'm a great Argentine supporter, but he just hadn't got the legs after that. And what a brilliant ride by Kelly. Caught him back, and in the sprint, went past effortlessly. Let's look back in the distance to the crash. Certainly one of the Motorola riders hitting the deck and taking down another of his teammates too. And no, it wasn't Fondris who dropped back. Fondris is still upright, coming in, and so they go down on the far side as well. And that just shows you... The problems of sprinting, uh, how these men take the life into their hands. Kelly Armsaloff, save us at the moment of victory.